I'm just kidding. Welcome back for part 2. Well, let's get some paint on this project. I always like to start with all the colors on the wet palette. And I will name every color on screen every time I use a different color. For this diorama I want dark colors to keep it a bit more spooky and Halloweenish, But I want a good contrast to keep it interesting to look at. On the left of the screen you can see every paint I'm using and, as always, they are all green of worlds. Let's get started with the first pumpkin. And zoom in a bit so you can actually see what I'm doing with these tiny killer pumpkins. This one is actually the largest of the selection and because of that he will be the most colorful of them all. Starting with a complete coverage of forest green. After the base color it's time for the first highlight. I'm mixing that same forest green with Go Mango and Bestial Brown and darken it a bit with some Black Stallion for a better transition. I paint all the raised parts of the pumpkin while the base color is still wet. This will help blending in the colors. This is also the only highlight that will cover every part of the pumpkin. Well, that is on the higher parts. Now of course, a pumpkin needs orange. Time to mix in a good looking shade. And I go for Bestial Brown, Go Mango and a bit of Hellfire Red to make it pop. I don't look at ratios, but I'm mixing until I'm happy with the color on my palette. It's a bit more artistic, I think. To keep the contrast in light and dark strong, I will only paint the parts that will catch the light. This being the face and only the upper parts of the backside. This way it ends up with a natural looking shadow. I think he already looks cool, but there's still lots to do. Now don't forget to keep the paints thin if you don't use a wet palette. This will really help you with a smooth blend. I suggest using master medium to give yourself a bit more working time. This way the paint will dry less fast as when you work with just water. I'm adding a second coat to the face to make the color pop just a bit more. He still needs some blushing cheeks. Well, uh, I mean more highlights in the face. So more Go Mango. Because the transition between the green and the orange are a bit harsh, I will glaze a bit of brown in between. A glaze is a very thin coat of paint, but don't let it pull in the recess like you would with a wash for example. This looks way more natural with just a tiny bit of brown in between. Now with a bit of forest green, ivory tusk and go mango, I'm creating this color for the stem. It's a nice green that will pop against the orange colors of the pumpkin itself. And I will just add a bit of ivory tusk to the mix for the last highlight. Don't forget the little warts he has. <laughs> with a bit of ivory tusk mixed in with the previous orange colors, I creating the last highlight color for, well, the sharpest edges around the mouth, the eyes and the nose and simply clean it up with a bit of black stallion. Now on to the next one. It's a bit out of focus but I'm using scorched wood and bestial brown for the base coat. You just have to trust me on that. <laughs> I want this pumpkin to stand out a bit more because of its smaller size. So I'm going for one of those more pale pumpkins. For the first highlight I'm using bestial brown and go mango. 
I focus on the face and the upper parts of the backside. He looks happy with my decision. Look at that cute face. Such a beautiful smile. For the last highlight I will add a bit more ivory to the mix and paint the sharpest edges in his face. So again around the eyes, the nose and the mouth. And of course also the upper parts of the body itself just to keep that contrast. With edge highlighting it's important to have a nice brush with a good tip. It really will help to make those lines very sharp and of course don't use too much paint. To make the stem stand out I'm using two shades of green. Forest green again and a small highlight of forest green with Go Mango. And again a little bit of black to clean up the mouth. On to the next one. And actually this is one out of three with the same color so I'm only showing you this one. If you want to see all three, well just play this part three times. I'm starting with another base coat of forest green followed by a highlight of forest green plus ivory. These are so incredibly small I'm glad I glued them on a toothpick with super glue. I have plenty of paints on my hands already as you might have noticed. And this way I can keep the paint on the pumpkin, which is where I like it to be, of course. And because these tiny ones are already green, I won't be painting the stems green as well. I gotta need that contrast. So go mango it is. I will also use the color for some more visual interest in the tiny pumpkin itself. I'm just... Adding a bit of highlights here and there, dabbing it with my finger to just leave some, well, some tiny spots. For the pot it sits on, I'm going for a more earthy color with a bit of pop. I'm using bestial brown, scorched wood and a bit of forest green in the mix. And then I simply add a bit of ivory and place the final edge highlight with pure ivory tusk. You must be thinking, how many pumpkins will there be? And no worries, this is the last one, and the best of the selection in my opinion. It's a pumpkin in a pot and a bed of roses, uh, I mean leaves, a bed of leaves, which is still cute though. I am painting the leaves with a base coat of yet again forest green, and I'm trying to keep the colors matching with each other. The highlights are made with forest green and go mango, that gives a nice vibrant green. Don't forget to paint the edge highlight as well. And with the plenty parts done, it's time for the little oh so innocent looking killer. Or killer? I start with the base coat of bestial brown, which I forgot to mention. And the first highlight will be a popping orange. A mix of bestial brown, go mango, hellfire red and a bit of ivory tusk. I'm just mixing colors till I'm happy with the result. I only paint the raised parts of the face and the high parts of the backside for that same contrast as before. I feel like the face needs to be smoothened out a bit. So I'm glazing in some green to achieve that. It also needs more pop. So I'm painting the sharpest edges again with some Go Mango. The 
highlights around the edge of the eyes, the mouth and the nose really make that face come to life. It instantly looks like a little person. Or a little way too innocent looking killer pumpkin. I'm onto you, buddy. Mm, so I've used browns already, greens and orange. But his plant pot needs to be painted as well. I'm going to add a new color to the mix, blue-gray dusk. I'm mixing it in with some browns and black to start with a somewhat similar color in a darker shade and then I will highlight it with just the blue-gray dusk. And to pull in the colors a bit more, I'm going to stipple some light green in the still wet coat of paint. And with that, all the pumpkins are done. In part 1 of the Green Stuff World Killer Pumpkin Diorama, you can see that I also made this fine, using wire in two different thicknesses. A thicker wire twisted to make the stem, and some curly bits with a thinner wire. I made it so it can go up the wall for a nice visual effect. The leaves are from a Green Stuff World paper plant that kinda looks like those of the pumpkin plant. Well, not really, but it's good enough. I paint the leaves the same as the potted pumpkin with the base color of forest green and the highlights of forest green and go mango. For the edge highlights I will simply mix in some ivory to make it pop. The stem will be painted with a mix of scorched brown, bestial brown and darkens a bit with black stallion. This is a warmer brown base to start with. Adding some shadows with more scorched wood and later black will make it look very natural with a good contrast. The curly bits need to stand out a bit more, so I'll paint them with bestial brown and the highlights of ivory tusk on the tips. With the pumpkins and the plants done, it's time for the largest part of the diorama, the base. I want red bricks, but not too bright as it's supposed to be a bit grim and Halloweenish. Because of this I'm mixing the Hellfire Red with some scorched wood, keeping the color warmer as it would be when using black for the mix. I'm using a big brush and I'm painting all the raised parts of the wall. I think you can almost call this dry brushing. I want the black base to still be visible for a nice contrast in the colors. Now what is a wall without some moss? Using forest green yet again, I'm stippling roughly where I want the moss to grow. I'll add highlights and layers using ivory tusk mixed in with the green. I simply stipple over the first layer until I'm satisfied. With the same big brush and scorched wood, I'm painting all the planks. I want this wood to look old in the end, a bit worn down, maybe walked over one too many times. And just, well, to give it a bit of a visual interest, I will go for some shadows, some highlights, and just, well, keep in that contrast like I was mentioning before. I will add some bestial brown to the mix when it's still wet so the colors will mix on their own. I think you call this technique wet blending, but I'm not 100% sure. Using a watered down blue-gray dusk, I will stipple randomly all over the stones, leaving some space for more color. 
with browns and greens I'm filling up the non-painted parts and let the paint blend in by itself. Especially if it's watered down, it will blend in way better and just let it do its thing. It might look a bit weird, but when it's dry and later dry brushed, it will look way better. Just trust me on that. A hair dryer can be a very handy tool here to dry the paint faster, but you can also simply wait if you're not in a hurry. Maybe make yourself a nice cup of tea, coffee, get something to eat, like, oh, like cookies. Please get me some too. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's time to paint some shadows with some thinned down black stallion or a black wash, whichever you prefer. I'm going for multiple thin layers to make sure I'm not overdoing it. And just add a shadow anywhere that feels natural to you. I'm even painting some shadows in between the rocks. Going for that second layer here because it's, well, it needs just a bit more. Using bestial brown and an actual dry brush technique, I'm adding highlights to the wood, making it look weathered and old. And dry brushing is a nice technique to use for this. You will simply put a bit of paint on your brush and wipe most of it off on a paper tissue or something. To match the wall more to the wood, I simply use the same color of bestial brown and dry brush the parts that will catch the most light. I really like how this piece is looking so far. It's colorful, but not too bright. And because I'm using the same colors mixed with each other, they all fit together. Starting with the same base color and ending with the same highlight color really does a lot for making the colors match. For example, a red mixed with brown, then pure red, followed by a red mixed with pink, will still match with a blue that is mixed with brown and mixed with a pink for the highlight. Let's try it sometime and see for yourself. I'm almost done, but it feels it needs a bit more. And the first idea that is popping up in my head is, what is a plant without some dirt? So Green Stop World ground textures to the rescue. Simple, smear it wherever you want and let it dry. I put some in the plant pot and on the stones. And it also works as a nice gap filler. Now with the fine in place and the plant pot glued in place, you can simply snap off the pumpkin off the toothpick and place it on the diorama wherever you like. If you want, you can add some shadows and some highlights with a thin down black paint and a bit of dry brushing. I can call it done now, but this is for Halloween and the pumpkins have been way too kind so far. They need a bit more killer to the pumpkin. So blood effects it is. I'm using a weathering stick in a stippling method and adding most of the splatter this way. But in the end I decided I want more and straightly dripped it out of the bottle. Now this is a killer pumpkin diorama. Well, I'm not sure what these pumpkins did last night, but I'm sure someone can tell the story. For more paint creations check out my Instagram. I will put all links and information in the description. Well, that's it for today. I hope to see you in the next, but for now, stay humble, be kind, and have a good day.